All right, welcome into, uh, I guess I'll call it the break room. It's not NBA, but it is NHL with the Bulls long out. The Blackhawks are in the push and in the Western Conference Finals taking on everyone's arch nemesis, the Detroit Red Wings, the defenders of Lord Stanley's Cup. And joining us now from Grand Rapids and the Grand Rapids Press is Mike Zeinem. Mike, thanks a lot for joining us. You're a Red Wings uh, columnist, you've been with them all season long, so obviously I would think that you're not surprised by the 2-0 lead on the Hawks. No, not at all. I mean, I knew Chicago speed would cause Detroit trouble, and I think that's played out in games one and two, but you know, Detroit's got the experience, the talent, the depth, the coaching, they've got it all, and uh, you know, before the season even started, I figured they had to be favorites to win the Stanley Cup, and I see no reason to change that now. Yeah, you've been there for a number of years. You guys get jaded in having year after year a team that is built to make it to the finals, if not to the championship. I think a lot of fans get spoiled, that's for sure. You know, during this season, you know, public enemy number one for a long time was Chris Osgood. And I don't think before the playoffs started, a lot of fans thought that the Red Wings were going to make it there. I think they expected Chris Osgood to be a sieve like he was for stretches during the regular season. But now, ever since the playoffs started, he's really been uh, the Conn Smythe favorite, along with maybe Johan Franzen. And last night, he really kept the Red Wings in it in that first period, especially when the Blackhawks were coming hard and kind of playing a little desperate there, trying to get a win uh, at Joe Lewis Arena to to make this a 1-1 series instead of 0-2 for them. And, uh, you know... It, it's funny because every time somebody on the Red Wings screws up, it's like get rid of them, and then you know they make the play to win the game, and uh, suddenly they're a hero again. So it's 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 funny how jaded and how how much of a roller coaster these Red Wings fans really take. Uh, sounds like I grew up in New Jersey. Sounds like the New York fans. I uh, love them for the <laughs> moment. Or Boston, you know, they're everywhere, I suppose. Even Chicago, I'm sure. Yeah, it definitely. And and when you talk about Chicago, the perception here at home, you know. It, People are, are happy where they are, thought maybe this was a year premature that they weren't going to get this far. Um, what is the perception from an outsider's view of the Blackhawks now uh, after they've been a cream puff for so long? Well, I think a lot of people are, are comparing them kind of to the 1995 Red Wings who, who needed a few years to learn how to win before they could take that next leap and become a Stanley Cup champion. And, and you can kind of see that. I mean, right now, the I'm sure the the goat tag is hanging on Patrick Kane right now. And you can see he's clearly, clearly frustrated out there on the ice. Last night he was barking at Dan Cleary a lot of times. And, uh, you know, a few seconds later, Dan Cleary scores on a breakaway. And that, that's the kind of things that separate, you know, a championship caliber team from a, from a young team that's really showing its immaturity, I think. And, uh, you know, Jonathan Tays got on the board and he's starting to show it a little bit. But it might take, you know, this learning experience for them to be able to take the next step. Let me ask you about a guy I covered here for many years, Chris Chelios. Uh, the fact that uh, the the old man is is just not able to uh, break the lineup. How much have you had a chance to talk to him, or or is there any perception of of how he feels? It's got to kill him not to be able to get to go line up against his old team. I'm sure it does deep down inside, but you know he's said all season long that he this is kind of what he expected. I think he knew even before he signed that contract in the off season to come back, that this was going to be how it shook out in the playoffs. And he's had a chance to come in and skate a little bit in the Anaheim series when Brian Rafalski went down. And, you know, he, he looks a little bit like his age. is You know, he's lost a step. He's not that all-star defenseman anymore, obviously. It's it's hard to be when you're 47, 48 years old. But, uh, you know, he was he was smart. He was steady. Uh, he, he played it safe, and that's kind of what the Red Wings needed at the time until Brian Rafalski came in. But I think you're absolutely right. He'd love to be in there, especially uh, get to set, step on the United Center ice because uh, even though they're in, you're in Detroit, there were a lot of Chicago Blackhawk fans at the game, especially for game one, wearing a Chelios number seven jersey. All right, as I let you go, i got to ask you, you look around the United Center where the Hawks are playing, and I say out of any sport, hockey pl- hockey teams and hockey fans have the best-looking women in the stands. How, how's the Detroit crowd? Give us the insight. <laughs> not too bad, not too shabby. You know, for, you know, from where I'm seated in the press box, I don't have too much of a, a, a great view, but fortunately the Joe Lewis Arena Jumbotron, you know, must be run by, you know, a group of five gentlemen because they make sure to scan the crowd and find the uh, – find the best ones out there for everybody to enjoy, I suppose. Won't put a crimp in your style. I understand you just got engaged. My, my fly on the wall is giving me info. <laughs> I did indeed. I did indeed. Congratulations. Good luck, and I uh, look forward to seeing you when you come into Chicago. And uh, maybe the Hawks get even, but like you said, 
I, I, I agree. I think the Red Wings uh, are built for this run, and the Blackhawks, it's amazing they got as far as they did, but it's all experience for next year. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time, but, yeah, you're right. I don't see the Blackhawks being able to win four games out of five. All right, Mike, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Mike Zaitema of the Grand Rapids Press joining us, and thanks again. We'll see you soon.